Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, Michael Troy here, and today we're going to look at Camelot 3000 by Mike W. Barr and Brian Bolland. All right, so in the 80s, this came out, uh, this was a maxi series by Brian Bolland and uh, uh, Mike W. Barr, co-creators. Mike wrote it. Brian Bolland is the artist. I think he did a lot of the inking. Well, maybe he did some of the inking, but then the rest was done by Bruce D. Patterson and Terry Austin. Let me say that since they're he's not credited um, as an inker, let's say that he wasn't and he was just the penciler, just because I don't want to get that wrong and we'll just go with what's in here. But this was like kind of unusual for the day. So this is uh, a telling, a retelling of uh, the Knights of the Round Table. Um, in a sort of futuristic way, as you can see the flying cars and all that. So this is very uh, awesome Brian Bolland work. I think this is pretty much his first American work um, in the 80s. Uh, Jeanette Kahn from uh, DC Comics initi initiated a very good uh, idea to go to London and sort of mine their talent pool and um a lot of the artists and writers uh came from uh doomsday 2000 and uh judge dread uh among other things i think marvel uk had a line of comics where a lot of these creators came from too um but so anyway uh brian bolland was uh Judge Dread artist, if you've ever seen, that's where I first encountered his work. My brother collected Dredge Dread and just the art was nothing short of spectacular. And I mean, you can see this insane amount of detail. I love his style. Um, <clears throat> he's fairly unique, I'd say, in his style. Um, definitely has his own aesthetic. Maybe he was influenced more by the British artists, perhaps. But um, I know that I really like his style. I have to say this is good inking on because um, Brian usually inks himself. And um, I think he's his best inker. But this stuff is great. Um, so I believe this first came out as a 12-issue maxi series that was supposed to be monthly, but fell prey to horrible, horrible late deadlines. It's kind of a miracle it even came out. So uh, this is, you know, for such a detailed artist and such a great craft craftsman, um, you know, I would imagine doing a monthly book at this level would be difficult. So after this, he would do of course, The Killing Joke, like one of the best comics ever, especially um, art-wise, it's unparalleled. And um, so, but after that, I mean, he, you know, he does interior work here and there, not so much in the recent past, but um, mainly a cover artist, did a memorable um, cover run on Wonder Woman, um, I'm sure if you weren't aware of that, you've at least seen some of the covers. He also did a great run on Flash. Um, and now, <clears throat> like Dave Gibbons, another, um, English export. <laughs> uh, he only works digitally. So you will no longer be able to purchase original boards of Brian Bolland art, which is a shame, but it's amazing to me that he can um, maintain the same level of detail. I don't know, I find digital inking, I guess I'm getting better at it, but at first it was very intimidating, very slippery, for lack of a better word. But um, there's ways around that and you get used to it. But um, you know, it's funny because uh, I can tell the difference between the Bruce Patterson inking and the Terry Austin inking. I mean, this screams Terry Austin right here with the, the hatching, especially the hatch master, Terry Austin, and his lines are always a little bit shorter somehow. You know what I'm saying? Don't make me say it. 
But I mean, this is one gorgeous book, epic in scope. And I just love that this came out from like regular DC, you know, they were kind of innovative in the 80s. Marvel was definitely, I feel, giving them a run for their money and they wanted to sort of up the ante. And they came up with a lot of great books. Um, you know, the writer of this book, Mike W. Barr, you know, uh, wrote a lot of Batman and Batman and the Outsiders spun out of that. And I was a big Batman and the Outsiders fan. So I'm a fan of his writing. And this art's a lot of fun. I wish uh, the printing were, I wish, I don't know if they've ever done a more recent trade than this, but it'd be kind of nice to see it on some slightly better paper, a little bit better production value. But you can just see all the insane detail and just, you know, he's such a great storyteller and he really just puts his all into his work. And, um, great looking King Arthur and you know it's always fun to see the the greats revisited or redone in a way that is uh acceptable to the source material I mean let's face it there's been a lot of uh bastardizations of uh really great classic stories I don't know what's going on here with that but I guess it's to ruin the value of this trait, but oh well. At least we get to look at the art and read the story and God bless America, that's what comics were made for, eh? So, oh wow, that's really cool. I would, I mean, I would love to own an original page from this work. I want to say this is Terry Austin, but he probably came in more towards the end. Maybe uh, Bruce Patterson had to pick up other jobs waiting for the pencils to come in or something. Hey, that's all speculation, but I can very much tell this is uh, Terry Austin's inking. I love that I have these gorgeous pencils and I'm going on about the inking, but it's such a crucial imperative part to the comic book art process. Um, great inking goes hand in hand with great classic comic book art. It's just as important as any other aspect, especially when it comes to the art. So I guess that's the end. That's a look at the Mike W. Barr, the writer, and Brian Bolland and their great trade paperback collection of Camelot 3000, a different take on King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Anyway, I'm Michael Troy. Please subscribe to my channel, hit like, and I'll bring you more content later. All right, thanks, guys.